Mad Colin has gone off to the dentists for a root canal filling. Oh, I can feel the pain already. <laughs> Greetings, RC Model Geeks, and here we are. Back in the shed of oh, shame. Yeah, Mag Collins here. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Back for a couple of hours. He's yep. got the dentist later this afternoon. Yeah, I've got to have a root, root canal. canal. Yeah, I hate them. Oh, oh, God. It's only a small prick, mate. Yeah, I know, but uh, your whole head goes numb. Your eye sockets, your ears. Oh, I don't like them. No, it's all about what your wife said. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Cool. Right, uh, yeah, so here we are. Yeah, late start. It's what, one o'clock, isn't it? Gone. Yeah, I think so. So, uh, yeah, we're obviously not going to get much done today by the looks of it. Hmm. But what we are going to do is at least glue the tail on. Yeah. As we have the extra pair of hands. Yeah. And, uh, and Colin will be mixing up some epoxy. Yeah. Um, Purely, purely for one subscriber, old yes. Chris Gange there. Chris Gange. Hi, Chris. How you doing, uh, mate? <laughs> uh, Colin's going to demonstrate how he stirs epoxy. Yeah. The easy way. This is going to be exciting. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to... Um, and then we're going to stick tunnel. Stick so, tunnel uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we're going to stick the tunnel on. Mm. Uh, and then we're not done. We're not far off then. Once that's done... Got all the controls connected up. It's just doing the other blade, and she's ready to fly. Mm. Apart from some decoration, maybe. But yeah. um, we'll see. But the weather's not looking too good at the moment, now, is it? No, it's gone a bit um, crappy. It's again. gone a bit windy and shitty. Mm. So we'll have to see what happens. Mm. So anyway, Connor's going to stir up some pox. Yep. And uh, we'll be back with you. Right. I'm going to hand the camera over. Be right back. <clears throat> okay. So here we are. Mad Colin has the tools of epoxy mixing. Yes. So over to Mad Colin. Hi guys, how you doing? Right, the secret is to have a nice flat surface, uh, preferably non-porous, to mix your pox on. Now can you explain this before the epoxy actually goes off? Uh, that's that's the worry of, of the viewers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bit of cardboard. Uh, we'll tr try and keep it to the basics, yeah? Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, I always cut myself a clean piece of flat cardboard like that. Right. Okay, and I also, stick. I also shape my stick. Uh, oh, yes, that's very professional. Yeah, because if you've got you've big... never done that before, though, it's just yeah, I've, showing I've, off in front of the camera. No, I've always um, shaped your sticks for you. So you give, give them a little bit of the limelight, and look what happens. Yeah, I know. Start sharpening his stick. Well, it's like if that's exaggerated, if you're trying to mix epoxy with that like that and get it into a small <laughs> just space. Just get on with it! Oh, okay, right, okay, so stick, <laughs> strong stick, so you don't want to snap oh, off. Oh, you'll be at the dentist by the time this fucking goes oh, on. Oh, oh. Right. So, <laughs> when you cut the end off your... He's even bought his toothpaste and toothbrush with him, you know, people. But the other thing is... When... So keen. <laughs> the other thing is, when you cut the end off your tube epoxy, make sure you get the holes the same diameter. Oh, yes, now that is a big problem with certain people. I mean, some people are cutting back there for their hardener, and they'll cut it right back there for the other one. It just... It's lucky you ain't mixed this yet. No, that's right. <laughs> so... <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> right, so what you're going to do, Cole, you're going to make some lines of epoxy that, that are all the same size. That's right, so just keep an arm slightly above the cardboard, give it a squeeze, and then you just do a line. This is for the people that don't know how to squeeze the tube of epoxy. Right, that's one. I'm going to do three because we've got quite a... Yeah, we probably won't need that much, but he's going to do three anyway. Yeah. Two... And just keep it the same feed and try and keep your lines the same width. Okay? Right. That was easy, you want it? Yeah, that was easy. And then we have the hard nut. If you're in a really cold environment, it takes a lot longer to go off, by the way. Yeah. The same thing. And you'll find that the hardener and the, um, and the adhesive uh, are actually different viscosities and tend to come out at different rates. Yeah. So just keep an eye on So you just want to keep an eye on the size of your uh, your run of epoxy, really. That's what you're yeah. trying to keep the same. And obviously, when you do your first line, don't get this too close to your, your hardener or the other one, because you'll find that if you get any stuck on the nozzle and it dries... You'll have a crusty tip. You'll have a crusty tip. <laughs> 
OK, then it's just a process of... Um, and then you've got to stir it, mate. Yeah, so I do is uh, just give it a quick what stir. What do you do, Cole? Do you stir it? Give it a quick stir like that. Yeah. And then I just bring yeah, the edges so in. Scrape all the stuff into the middle. Into the middle like that. Yeah, that's what people fail to do, and they get a bad mix. Scrape it all from the outside into the middle. Yeah. See that? Little mix, and then the other corner. Now, we're using Hobby King 5-Minute Epoxy, actually, and that's all I ever use. I don't use any longer stuff. No? Um, no. And that works quite well. But, yeah, you've got to give it a good old stirring. Yeah, get it really going. Beat it like you do the wife. Yeah, I was going to say cake mix, actually. Ah, oh, right, OK. <laughs> Beat it like the wife, or if you make it a sponge, same difference. <laughs> So I don't think that's far off. Yeah, I mean, you know, shit. I mean, that's it, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that looks quite nicely mixed. Well, there you go. You. Make sure you scrape it off your uh, off your bit of wood and and mix it again, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, it ain't no more difficult than that, is it? Really? That's it. So now I'm going to put the camera down, and we're going to get on gluing, and we'll be back with you when the tail's glued on. Okay. Okay. After that exciting interlude of uh, Colin stirring epoxy yeah uh, we have the tail glued on yeah she's all glued on lined up she's on and on uh, yeah we just run a little bit of paint over the joint as well to cover up our mistakes and <laughs> <laughs> and yeah I mean that's you know that's getting pretty close now the weather's shit I think it's gonna uh, be flyable today but we have quite finished anyway hmm. but uh, somebody was saying about this uh, silver covering and uh, it looks quite promising it is quite promising if you ignore all the horrible marks that are on it hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you can see on here that you get this weird veining effect if I uh, zoom can, in can, uh, can you see him I can't oh yeah I can that, yeah yeah you can see that and that's every time if you shrink the covering this this silver covering it does that hmm all right uh, if you just iron it flat on to something, like a panel, without shrinking it, it's not too bad. Yeah, so if you were like wanted to make loads of panels up on a solid fuselage and make it look like it was proper metal panels, you could probably cut bits of this and iron it on. Mm. And it would look, uh, it would probably look great as a, a sort of an aluminium uh, finish. Yeah. But shrinking over uh, something like this here, you see, you always get all these funny lines and, uh, yeah, shrinkage lines. So that's the problem there. I mean, it goes on all right, but it just, mm. it doesn't look right. And you can't get rid of that. No. It's not like you can wipe it off or anything like that. No. Um, it's, you know, it's permanently in there and you can't polish it because it's obviously the coating's on the inside, the silver yeah. coating. It's so that's the only downside with that silver. Yeah. If you're ironing it on something flat without shrinking it, Brilliant. But otherwise, you're screwed. Mm. It's okay if you want a plane to look aluminium. Well, yeah, but it doesn't though. It looks like aluminium with fucking veins all over it. Yeah, it looks uh, like it's run, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks like um, someone sprayed and it's run a bit. Yeah, that's that that's the downside <laughs> that. But it does does look like um, aluminium, you know, in real life, and it's actually mm. got a grain to it. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the pictures, but the grain in this aluminium runs like that, crossways. Yeah. So you have to be careful which way round you put it as well, otherwise yeah. it, you know, you get grains going different ways. Um, but yeah. yeah think... And it is actually um, conductive. That I was just remember we did say the test that on that, on didn't the we? RQ7, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that um, alumized coating is actually conductive. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do not do a whole fuselage in that and no. put a receiver inside. Because with all... the out, out the aerials coming out, yeah. you want those aerials outside yeah. one of these um, aluminium covered fuselages. Otherwise, you'll take screwed. off and crash. Otherwise, you'll be creating a Faraday cage. Yeah. 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 It's, it's very similar to the the, um, the mylar they use on uh, balloons. Hmm. You know, the metalised balloons and stuff. Mm. But yeah, it's definitely conductive. Mm. So yes, there you go. Um, all we've got to do now is put a horn onto here. Mm -hmm. um, we've got to glue these hinges in. Yep. The rudder and the hinging for that. That goes right there like that. Mm -hmm. And we're there. Yeah. Awesome. 
So, back with you when we've done uh, a bit more. Yeah. Uh, unless Colin has to go before we get any more done. Yeah, it's the dentist is living <laughs> closer. Oh, <shh. laughs> yeah, get the Dremel out. <laughs> uh, no, don't. Not that your Dremeling isn't precise, it's just... Uh, oh, it's very precise. The bit, bits you... Yeah, no, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, you're not plugged in. I'll right, have an injection first. <laughs> <laughs> right, be right back. Yes, small prick. Oh, yeah, <laughs> pardon, needle. <laughs> needle. OK, uh, just for giggles, we thought we'd weigh it. Um, and we reckon it's going to be pretty much uh, on a kilo um, without the battery. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty good. I mean, that they were quoting um, a weight of uh, 1.3 kilos. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we come out pretty light. But, I mean, obviously the battery's going to weigh a fair bit. Mm. So, yeah. So the last thing we've got to do is make the other rotor. Mm. All right, we've got the blades all covered here. Which are there. There's three of them. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one is there. Yep. All right. And... Uh, I don't know how they managed to do this, but uh, this is laser cut. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be laser cut square. Mm hmm And they've uh, they've done a great job of laser cutting it not square. Oh, yeah. And you can see it's got laser cutting marks on all sides. So it must have, like, moved as they were laser cutting it or something. Mm. Um, so we're going to have to glue a bit of wood onto here. Mm hmm And then um, sand it square. Yeah. Um, this is the block that goes in between the two uh, hubs of the rotor, as you can see here. It will sit in there like that. Mm. So, as you can see, yeah, it's a little bit out. Mm. And these uh, these actually support the blades. The blades sort of lock into them. So they sit. the blades will sit like that when it bolts together. Yeah. So it's got to be pretty damn good. More like that, in fact. So, yeah. Um, so we'll stick a bit of wood on there and uh, get that sanded to the right shape. Hmm. Um, and we'll be back with you in a minute. Right. Right. Mad Colin has gone off to the dentist's for a root canal filling. Oh, I can feel the pain already. <laughs> right. So, yeah, there we go. 99.9% done. Um, just got to sort out the um, uh, the horn on the elevator uh, and uh, put the rudder on. Uh, and that's it. I'm not rushing, and I'll tell you why. Because it's blowing a gale out there. Um, the weather is turning crap. So, um, I don't think it'll be uh, maiden weather tomorrow, which means we can uh, finish this. So, ha, see you all tomorrow. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Keep sending in the pictures. I've got a few to print out now again. So thanks for that. Um, if you want a mug, let me know. I've got an order for one that I'll probably be sending out tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah. Um, see you all tomorrow for part 13 is it must be part 13 tomorrow this was part 12 excellent see you all soon bye